Schultze here tying uh, my latest and greatest creation, the, the Fluttercraft. This is the fly we started tinkering with last uh, year uh, towards the tail end of the season and uh, kind of playing off what we learned with the, the woodsman and uh, running the up hooks, uh, keeping this thing uh, weedless, um, snagless, you know, you're fishing our rivers, there's a lot of wood, so when this thing's cruising around the wood, you're not gonna not gonna hang up with it it'll it'll climb over the wood it'll um, kind of roll and, and unhook itself it's, it's kind of a cool little platform and what's cool about it is you can fish it a bunch of different ways you can fish it uh, on the burn you can fish it two hand strip you can fish it really slow um, and, and kind of fish spots with it um, but uh, definitely has a very unique uh, action to it it's not one that swims perfect you don't have to add any extra rod movements to it uh, simply point the rod at it, keep the rod tip low, strip it um, with pauses, and uh, you'll get some pretty cool results. When it falls, it kind of flutters and does weird stuff, and when it's stripped, it's very uh, unpredictable, um, very erratic, uh, you know, uh, swim to it. And uh, it runs upside down. Looks like it's looks like it's wounded. Looks like it's hurt. It definitely, there is a point where it's too light, uh, where the thing will just twist and, and turn. So it's very important to um, uh, put the, that weight in there to stabilize it, uh, to make it swim uh, the way that it swims. If not, it's just going to spin. So um, take your time, tie it right. To start, I'm going to put a 10 millimeter shank in the vise, and um, we're going to build a tail. So um, tail is going to be like a flicker style tail. So I'm just going to kind of close that. So this this fly is mostly going to be made out of. Uh, Either translucy brush or frenzy brush is kind of the support uh, that's going to go underneath the craft fur, uh, and then a series of uh, mallard flanks and a lot of UV resin and uh, some under the hood stuff that we'll get to as we move forward. But to start, you're going to use one inch translucy or one inch frenzy brush on a uh, 10 millimeter shank. Come in here, pop this out of here, and all we're going to do is tie that in. A wrapper, wrapper two is all you need. So maybe a wrap and a half. So there's one full wrap. There's a little half wrap. Tie that off. Give yourself some room to work with there between the eye of the uh, eye of the shank and where you're tying this material off at. Come in here and trim that off. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and just kind of clean that up. Trim it up. And this is gonna be just there just to kind of keep those feathers spread out and a little bump there to kind of keep the, the shape of them and you're going to take a whiting hen cape um, these come off the same birds uh, as the american hen saddles and uh, you can use these for a variety of different things from dry fly stuff to steelhead wets to bass flies um, and then in this case we're using them for uh, the flicker tail. But I'm going to kind of come in here in this middle and I'm going to select yeah, six, six to eight feathers out of here, roughly of the same length. What you can do, what I do is I just line them up, get them kind of tip to tip. One more in there. And you're going to come in and just kind of cut them to length. You got a little clump of them there. I clean the clean them up a little bit. Give you give you a space to tie it in. I grab two at a time. Just tie them in two at a time. So I got two. Grab two more. I'll leave those stems sticking off the front. Drop a couple on the floor. Grab two more. Got them about the same way. Gonna come underneath, lock that in like so. Come in here and just clean these up. And if you got some materials that are kind of in the eye of the hook, just take a cautery or heat up your bobbin or bodkin rather, and uh, just burn those. Stems out of there. 
So you could take another hen feather or two and wrap a collar in there, or you could get right to your craft fur, which works well. I'm just going to take that craft fur, cut a little clump. Don't need much. That's way too much, but that's okay. Okay, by the you're going to see this repeated throughout this fly. You're going to you're going to use the the craft fur to build this whole body for the most part. You're going to grab it, just kind of come in here and rip and pull, kind of heat those fibers up. And you come in here and cut the this section down. Come in here. I'm just going to take the clump like so. I'm just going to put it in like that, kind of all around that shank, your thread, and then just lock that in. I'm going to take it and pull all this back. And start building your body. If it gets unruly and it's un, the, the lengths aren't exactly how you'd like them, uh, the overall length, I, I should say, um, you just take it all. You'll see here in a second. I'm going to pull it off the front, pull it all forward, kind of come in here and just pick those tips off. Kind of rip it, tear it, kind of heats up, and uh, you're good to go. I'm going to take some flexible UV resin or um, like a bone dry come in here and just finish off that thread and uh, you're good to go there so there's your tail section now you're gonna take another shank in this case we're gonna grab another 10 10 10 next one will be third one will be 15 Take that, put that on the vise. And you're going to do the same thing minus the tail feathers. One inch translucy. This color happens to be called, it looks like it's white, but it happens to be called shrimp. It's one of my favorites. So I'm using the shrimp support system and I'm using a cream crafter. One full wrap, maybe half a wrap, lock that in, give yourself a little bit of room. Luckily on this little shank you're only going to do translucent brush followed by craffer. Like so. Okay, you're going to come in with your scissors and just kind of shape that, taking quite a bit away kind of come in on an angle, kind of use that, if you're using a regal, kind of the shape of that, the head on the jaw allows you to kind of just to trim around it, like so, okay, and I'm back to the craft, kind of important to have a, like a serrated scissor for this stuff, um, they make scissors that are, you know, designated for uh, synthetics, that tend to work pretty well. Um, when you're working with this stuff, if, you, if you've worked with Crafter or if you're from the Great Lakes and you tie a lot of eggs, you'll know that these synthetics just destroy scissors. Another clump. Get some more of that those short fibers out. All you're going to do make that a little bit shorter. that same exact thing you're just going to clump it right on there all around I want that shank to be like lead running through the middle of a pencil all right take those fibers and craft fur and spread it out pull it back lock it in all right so 10 10, your third shank is going to be a 15. Okay, again, I'm going to check that, pull everything forward, get my length nice and uniform, cleaning that up. Okay, take that UV 
flexible resin. And that'll be the last 10 millimeter shank you tie with on this fly. So on this one, the 15 millimeter, it's going to be translucy, crapper, and then your first uh, mallard flank feather. Take that one inch translucy or one inch frenzy, whatever you have, both work excellent for this. And you're going to go roughly two thirds of the way up. One, two, three, I'm going to end it at four. We're going to work with there. up. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the uh, craft fur. Okay? Every step of the way, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Right through the middle the best you can. Trap those fibers. Spread them out. Pull it back. Lock it in. Don't cut your thread off. So you're going to put a, sh a flank feather in here. Do the same thing and pull this forward. Look at it. A little long, a little uneven. Fix it. This is much better than cutting it. The fly will look a lot nicer if you take the time to pluck this out. I'm going to put a little bit of resin on here, kind of at the base, and finish this off before I put the flank feather in. That'll kind of tame the materials and let them sit back the proper direction. Okay. Now this fly, if you've seen it before, um, or you've been to the shop and you've been able to handle it, it rides upside down. So until we get to the, to the final hook, I just keep everything cruising along this way and I will, um, Put the mallard flank feather in the top here. So you want to grab a small, the smallest mallard flank feather you can find. Uh, it's important when you're when you're sourcing these and, and kind of digging through your your bag of flanks. You want it to be straight, straight as possible. Um, you know, uh, a mirror image of the other side. You don't want the ones that are kind of kicked off and oblong and damaged. Come in. I'm gonna cut it. Gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm going to kind of come in and kind of cap this rear end. It's going to extend over the 15 and the 10 millimeter shank. More important as you get towards the front, but it all starts here. Take a little bit of that UV again. And finish her off. Cool. All right. So now you're gonna have to use a, a connection shank. You could use something like a, a Senyo um, trout shank. You could use another 15 or 20. This there's no hook behind this, so there's there's not gonna be a anything pulling on uh, this section of the of the fly. So use whatever you want. Uh, the choice hook for this is either going to be this um, SA274 curved salt or the A-Rex uh, minnow. Um, also an excellent choice uh, for this rear section. Cut that off. Again, nothing's going to be hanging off the back of this thing, so you just need a little shank to lock her in. Again, it's going to be tied. It's going to be fishing upside down, but... The fly continues to be tied like a normal fly here. So uh, the hooks actually will ride up and kind of surf on this mallard flank uh, back that we're going to put on this thing. The little enhancement we're going to we'll show you as we go through. So got that done. A little bit of brushable super glue to lock that in. If you're not using this stuff, you're missing out. Once again, we're back to the... Uh, one inch translucy. We're going to re repeat that same process up through here. So, 
two thirds of the way from where you tied in to the eye. Give yourself a little bit of room. There's one wrap. There's two wraps. There's three wraps. And honestly, I like the way that looks. So let's just clean that up. Lock it in. And cut a back wrap up on that. Cut her off. And back to our crafter after we trim this. Let's trim a little bit. Okay. Same thing. Take it, come on in. Stick it right over that hook as you did the shank. Lock that in. Lay this around and pull it back and lock it in. I'm going to tie that off, pull half hitch, lock it in, and then we'll pull it off the front and we'll, we'll look at the length again. Coming in here, everything's poking off the front, clean this all up. Okay, another mallard flank feather. I like to go about half the way over the other one, a third to half. Lock that in. Okay. Grab it. And UV resin. If you want to start putting a little bit on the on the flank so it lays back go right ahead stiffening of the f of the flank feathers will be more important as you move towards the front of this fly that definitely makes a huge difference next shank is going to be a 25 millimeter lock that in on this one there's going to be two sections so you're going to have a one inch, the translucy, to the craft fur, and then uh, more translucy to the craft fur, covering uh, a 25 millimeter shank. So one inch, work my way up, one, two, three, four, I'm going to go five, I'm going to go six, I'm going to lock that in, wrap right back on it. Okay, back to your crafter. fibers back wrap right back up on it and ramp it up pull it forward make sure your length is looking good and then you're back to the translucy stick with the one inch this will be uh, the last time we use the one inch two wraps three wraps they go four right back up on it save yourself some room to work with the craft fur and then you're going to add another mallard flank feather on this one. Don't trim the brush on this one. So leave the full one inch. Same thing. Come in here and grab a nice clump. At this point you're going to start getting a little bit thicker as you're working forward on this thing. A little more craft fur. Lock that in. And then you're going to cap it once again with the mallard flank feather. A little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger as you're working your way up. At this point uh, if you want to stiffen this thing up, you could use two. You could stack two feathers on top of each other. Um, but the key is to find those feathers that are stiff um, and they're straight. Flexible resin once again. Do the tie off point first. Hit that with a light. A little bit 
bit of this on the on the feather kind of right down the stem and you can either use a brush or your finger probably want to use a glove if you're doing this at home pull that back stiffen it up like so next thing you're going to do is you are going to grab a shank again you could use the Senyo trout shanks or you could use a 25 millimeter shank that you can cut the length whatever you have handy will work cut it Watch out. I'm going to take a uh, Arex TP650 which is a, uh, fly, a hook that we use a lot for um, our dredge flies um, but this little kick up here on the front allows the, you to build the head um, and kind of get that it, it just it helps um, it also helps with uh, uh, the way it rides and, and kind of cruises over top of, of wood and whatnot this happens to be a one ot you could use a two ot um, but one is about as small as I would go um, with the amount of craft for one ot um, is as small as I would go with the amount of craft for that you're going to put on the front of this fly so um, there's this is kind of the under the hood more than meets the eye factor of this fly um, you're going to use a um, tungsten bead in here, like so. And then we're even going to use more weight. But let me uh, swap out here. I'm going to go to the shank jaw, which will allow me to hold that hook a little bit better when I'm really reefing on it. Um, another tip would be to go to a, um, once you get the uh, shank locked into this hook, you could tie that that thread off and go to a um, gel spun thread. So let me put down a little thread base here with the Power 140 Vivas. Take this. You got to remember that you you are running your hooks up. So what I usually do on this, put it in the right way to start, and you're still tying it the traditional way. Or the hooks will be down. This is kind of the end of that. We'll flip it. So get that tied in. Kind of where the bead lands in this whole thing is important. So slide that bead back and that's about where you want it to be. Um, just forward, whoops, just forward of the point of the hook. So just forward. You can see it in there. About right there is where I want it and the reason for that is the the lead that we're gonna put on next uh, or the tungsten scud tungsten body whatever you want to use you need space up here and you don't want it running up on that that bend so I'm gonna take my glue we're gonna be patient here I'm gonna let that dry and while it's drying we'll talk about the two options for uh, the rest of this fly so as I mentioned, it's going to ride. It's not going to ride like this in the water. It's going to ride like this in the water, right? So you're going to need to put some weight, uh, some stability on this bottom so the thing flips uh, and, and swims the, the proper way. So option one for this uh, stability and, and kind of keel weight is going to be channel lead in size large by Cascade Crest, or you could get away with the hairline uh, tungsten scud bodies which work really well. Um, it's up to you. In this case we'll use the, the channel lead. So I'm just going to grab a little piece of this. Um, you can experiment with this fly um, depending on how big your watersheds are, how deep you're trying to get the fly, um, you know, castability, uh, whatever. You can you can totally totally tweak this thing and mess with it depending on what size rod you're throwing, what line, uh, sink tip versus intermediate a lot of the fishing we do with it is with an intermediate uh, setup so I'm going to take that channel lead just like we do on the woodsman I'm going to lock that in right there all right at this point we're switching over kind of got our, our front kind of built out um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to reach for the two inch Translucy. One, 
two, three, maybe four. Call it done. Brush, get in there and clean that up. Kind of shape that, trim it up, clean it up. Okay, now you're back to the crafter. Uh, it's important at this point uh, to, to note that you're going to tie these clumps in on the sides. Instead of coming over with one big clump, you're going to do two clumps, one on this side, one on that side. We're going to go back to the translucy for a few wraps. Then we're going to go clump, 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 clump. So it's six more clumps of crafter with a little bit of translucy brush in there. And... Uh, that's the that's the build. So now that we're doing it on both sides, let's switch thread. Let's go to a, a gel spun thread. So note the thread switch. Come in here and cut it. You want to leave more of this under fur and more of this bulk here as you move forward. Not as much here as you're going to use up here, but you still want to use a little bit more than you're using behind. So I'm going to come in there and make sure this is cut nice and clean. You know, you're using gel spun, you can really reef on it and get in there and, and lock these fibers in. So, come up here, you're going to get right behind that bead by design there. There's one locked in. Let's grab another clump. Two locked in. Got it. Pull it all off the front here. Come in there. Clean this up, see what she looks like it after we lock this in. Okay. You can kind of come in here with this resin, put a little bit on it, kind of work it so it's flat. It'll be a lot easier to, to work with. starting to shape this thing. Now I'm going to take a couple more mallard flank feathers. This is the important ones here that they're pretty good size. Extending back a little further than the others. Right, ranch your thread up. At this point, take a little more care and laying down some flexible. I'm going to just come in there like so. Grab your brush. Give her a brush using that resin to shape as well as stiffen that feather up. That's what's going to kind of drive the train. You got that smooth surface. If you want to get fancy at this point, this is just two inch red translucy. A few wraps of that. Give you that throat slash. A little red never hurts. Trim it flat. As I mentioned before, we're going to do two more clumps of craft fur on each side. So we're going to do the same thing. I talked about it before, but a little bit thicker as we work forward. You're going to, you're going to create this wide head to make this thing dance and swim and do its thing. Okay, so here we go. Reverse tie it. So, gel spun really helps here. Really reef on that. Another clump. So, same deal. Nice clump in there. Lock it in. Gel spun recommended. Okay, now we can look off the front. See if it's about the same length. I'm going to clean it up. Clean it up. Take these fibers. Split them right down the middle. Pull them down each side. Like so. A little more of this resin. I kind of come in here and shape this a little bit. Back. 
Okay. Work your way up in front of that channel lead. And this is where you're going to finish. You're going to finish strong here with a thick clump down on both sides. Big old clump. Right on the side. Pretty good size clump there. What I'll do at this point is I'll help shape it a little bit with the resin and kind of just run it in there just a little bit, not a ton just kind of get the shape and you could use a brush just kind of work that into the fibers and you can kind of figure out the shape that you want and you can get a loose loose profile going here and that kind of sets the stage to what you'll eventually have and you'll get that <coughs> that shape to work with so you don't have material sweet you don't have material moving all over the place what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my thread back in again a little bit tricky to work with with uh, the eye being in an awkward position with that 26 degree hook but you got that thread back in there so if you hit the jackpot you'll find some large symmetrical stiff feathers these are the ones that you're going to want to use to kind of finish this thing off. This all, this final part of it is very important. So um, having that large stiff feather that we're going to stiffen with that UV resin is going to make this thing uh, do what it does. So um, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to cut it. Kind of the rules of um, having the feather only, uh, you know, a little bit over the, the feather behind, uh, halfway to three quarters, uh, kind of goes out the window here you want to cap this thing and lock that in that's going to make it work okay again a little bit tricky here with this tie-in point because how much material you put on it so just do the best you can kind of massage that down get it flat um, and fight with it if you have to so I can kick this up a little bit that'll help you out so you're tying on a flat surface instead of a down come in there and lock that the gel spun is going to aid you at this point versus using regular thread and you can lock that in like so come in here like this tie it off trim it and what you can do is you can use shoe goo you could use um, more flexible resin you could use super glue but what you want to do is you want to get this thing laying flat, like so. And you kind of get it to where you want it. And you can start getting wild with your resin. But uh, do the best you can to get that mallard flank feather to kind of adhere to the craft fur. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stiffen this top portion the same way with the solar res or the raid zap thick.
very unpredictable. Fish it fast, fish it slow, burn it, spot fish it, kind of does it all, which is kind of cool and rare. Buttercraft.